I have a lot of respect for you. Um, as I mentioned, Trailblazer, without a doubt. So let's talk about trans wrestling in general right now because it's it's hotter than ever, right? Uh, it's made a yeah. lot of strides. Do you feel like, are you happy with the way it's been right now, or do you still feel like there's a lot left to go? Um, I'm really happy. With, I think there's always an uphill battle. Uh, I'm really happy with where we're at because I think that compared to where it was when I started, I think we're about almost at the peak. Um, uh, just in terms of just there being more people, more inclusion. When I started, there was only a handful of uh, queer people in general that were at least open in wrestling. And um, I think that there's more people now, which creates more space for talk, which makes less room for people to say you can't be on the show because there's less there's le- there's too many people that they can't say no at this point that's amazing you you love to see it uh did, did you have love that at first like people saying no just because of who you are yes yes and no because i do genuinely feel like i was blessed with a, a really beautiful career in the especially in the beginning of my career i feel like i got a lot of opportunities yeah. that uh Honestly, I never felt ready for some of the opportunities that I was handed to in the beginning of my career. And I think that's such a blessing. Uh, And then on the other end, uh, there was a lot of people not willing to book a queer person or use queer people at all. And I did deal with that quite a bit. Mm. Um, But it just was like a fire under my um, under my ass, if I can say if I can say that. (laughs) Um, Feel free to curse away, man. (laughs) um but it it just kind of lit a fire underneath me and made me want to work harder and it kind of made us all come together and create uh space for ourselves in the industry and i love that it's now being taken seriously because i feel as though during the time when i was younger when i would try to talk about it people didn't care because they didn't believe it because it wasn't you know, there was only a couple of us. So it wasn't in your face for you to see it, to believe that that would even happen. So now that there's so many people, there's not room for disbelief and it, there's no room for in, for intolerant people. No, absolutely. It, it seems like if you still are intolerant uh, towards trans wrestling right now, as a promotion, it seems like you're going to be left in the dust at this point because yeah, it, 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 you talk about strictly from like a business aspect, it's, it's money right there. You're, yeah. you're saying no to money. Yeah. People love people. Naturally, people go against the grain. And what I think is so cool about the queer community is that we have always gone against the grain. We have never tried to uh, join everybody. We've always made our own space. And I think that is amazing. And the fact that we could do that in wrestling is such a big deal, just solely because nothing like that has been done before. Like women's wrestling, yes, but there's a lot more uh, cisgendered people on the planet than there are queer people. You know what I mean? So from an aspect like that, uh, I think it's really crazy to see such a, a wave being paid, like a whatever I'm trying to say right now, the words that are coming out of my mouth are going crazy. I think it's cool to see a path being made uh, for queer people. Because of that, though, I mean, like, you know, you, you hear like in, in sports all the time with the argument about like, you know, trans athletics in general. Yeah. Does it create kind of like an awkward space, though, because, like, you know, there's just such especially in most wrestling promotions, I shouldn't say all, um, because there's certain wrestling promotions that definitely have a lot of inclus- inclusivity when it comes to titles. They're not necessarily so gender specific, but mostly they are gender specific to, you know, a men's championship, a women's championship. Does that create some sort of like, yeah. uh, like gray space? I think it used to, for sure. Um, I think there was a time in my career where when I was, technically a gay boy uh i was still very femme presenting and only wanted to be in women's wrestling at that time and uh and i had long hair and i wore makeup and i looked the part so i just didn't understand why i wouldn't be allowed to wrestle women uh and i i could not for the life of me understand that so i think now in general intergender wrestling is so widely acceptable versus when i started that um that there's not really even time for that discussion to really even happen because if men can wrestle women then then trans people can wrestle men and women and whoever they want and i think that's so awesome and i love that because i remember being a little gay boy and all i wanted to do was wrestle my favorite women's wrestlers and it was like pulling teeth to try to get matches with girls 
I remember the first time I wrestled a girl, I was so happy. I, I literally like cried. I was so happy. Who was it with? It was Lufisto. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, the first match to have with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I was, I was like th three days uh, freshly 18 years old. It was like my first or second ever match on a show. And I was in a triple threat with my old trainer and Lufisto. And I was so nervous because I respected and loved her so much because I followed her for so long. And, and uh, she whooped my ass, but it's okay because she's my auntie. So <laughs> <laughs> now let's, let's dive into that aspect of it, of like, you know, people that you've looked up to in wrestling, you know, you always talk about like, you know, you are um, Daphne's daughter, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's obviously a huge influence in your career. Um, you know, what, where are some things you carry with you today from Daphne? What, what have you learned from some other people who have inspired you along the way? Um, I feel like from Daph, the one thing I really took, the, she, get, she for so long always gave me so much advice. And we would talk on the phone for hours and hours and hours uh, every time, like every day. And um, the one thing I think that really resonated with me is just her bubbliness. Like, I feel like that's something that I carry along with because I always felt like almost like we were like mimicking each other with how just happy we were all the time uh and I it's so weird like that's so weird it's so strange to see people that are genuinely just always up here like and, and not phoning it in just so happy and that's how she was and I think that uh she taught me to kind of translate that into work so I'm not bitter going into work. So I, I'm not stressed out knowing I have to do all of this before a show day. So that way I can relax and I can just have fun and enjoy my journey. And she taught me a lot of that. But she also used to tell me uh, not to do too much of that too, because you don't want to give it all away. You you want to be a mystery <laughs> to people. How, I mean, like, I'm sure anyone that's listening right now would, would, would ask, it's like, you know, as an actor myself, you know, when we think, I love everything about it, but you know, there are definitely some hard days coming to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was like one tip that you would give to someone like, you know, how to change that mindset going into like, you know, a, a hard day. Um, I think I, I like to say like have a tether, you know? So if I, if I, there's some, I'm going to keep it 100. There's some days where I know I'm going into like a weekend of shows or even a show and I just really don't want to do it. Like I'm just not mindset there to go do it. And uh, my tether would be like watching a Molina match or listening to my favorite theme song or something that that takes away the stress of what I'm about to do and just brings back that feeling of like that undying love I have for it. And then it like clears my mind. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just like that one little thing, like, you know, that little sense of joy that you, that you yeah. get from someone or something. Oh. Yeah, I think I think that's so important because and I th I'm sure that that translates into acting as well. I especially I always wonder, like, because in some ways, when you when you start wrestling, uh, the magic is killed for you. You know what I mean? And I, I'm <laughs> in I any assume... aspect of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, as if you're in the industry at all, the magic is killed for you. And uh, I think that there's a power actually. Uh, Sue Young taught me that she can still watch um, wrestling like she's a little kid and in the sense of the magic still being there. I don't know how she has that ability. She just she does. And it's so awesome to see. Uh, and for me, she taught me that. I remember having that conversation. It was her, Luscious, Latasha, and I, and we were on FaceTime talking about it. And me and Luscious were so confused because we were like, how do you have that ability? And I think what you just have to do there is remember so much why you love it, what made you feel this way, and just to be able to remove yourself from everything that involves it to just literally enjoy what you're seeing. And when you do that, I think that honestly takes away a lot of the bitterness, the stress, the anxiety. I I love hard work. I I like to train uh, to wrestle twice a week. I love to work, lift. I like to listen to theme songs when I lift. All the above. But I think that there's something so therapeutical about being able to sit back and watch your favorite wrestler without thinking about the industry. A lot of wrestlers like to pick matches apart when they watch them, and I think that that is why people get bitter because they can't just sit there and watch it as a spectator and a fan. Oh my lord. You you just hit it right in the head. And it's funny you say that because like my mom actually just recently asked me, I was like, you know, look, why I love wrestling so much. Like why like why would I love it so much to get involved into it? And 
I, I, I told her about the first time I started watching wrestling, like the, the, the very first time, talk about 92, Bret Hart versus British Bulldog, SummerSlam. And I, I just felt like the joy, like the giddiness of being a kid yeah. again, watching it for the first time, like, you know, talking to her about it. And she's like, well, there it is. Now I understand. Thank you. I and, love it, it's so funny that. Talk about that. So like, there's, yeah, no, that there's so that's so true what you said. There's this feeling, and I, 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 it's like a feeling I used to get in my body when I was a child, and I would watch wrestling, and it was like the craziest feeling because I knew wrestling was like this edgy thing, and I, I just felt so awesome and badass for watching it, and uh, I, I can never explain what this physical feeling was, but it was like an upwards like motion in my body that just felt like adrenaline almost and like to the point where I could smell it what I was watching because I loved it that much <laughs> and that that feeling comes back when I watch some of my favorite wrestlers like Melina or Daphne or if I play like Smackdown versus Raw 2006 or 2008 oh my like, lord let's go <laughs> when I, yeah when I see when I see Tori Wilson on the old Raw stage in Smackdown versus Raw 2006 that hits me that feeling comes back and I die for that feeling because that is a feeling I've only had when i was a kid watching wrestling so when i can get to pull that back it's almost like it's like raw energy it's crazy girl i am i am stealing that from you going forward like you know that 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 little tether as you talked about because oh, yeah. just even this conversation alone i'm just like whoa i'm in the zone i'm yeah. so happy <laughs> i think i think it's really beneficial to like acting and to the music industry too because i really wonder for like actors and for musicians you know everybody you know what i mean like how how is it not hard to like i know for me i'm so passionate about movies i love movies i feel like if i became an actress i would lose that magic and movies would be ruined for me unless i had a good tether See, no it doesn't go like you know there's really there's still like i've been doing this for eight years and there, i could still yeah. like walk onto a set and like you know sometimes you go into a sound stage and it's all kind of about the same but like you know there's sometimes you go into into a set and you're just absolutely blown away like whoa like you just feel that energy still um and of course so like you know like it, it's it's other stuff that kind of makes it like oh it's gonna be a day it's yeah. like an early call time you, or you know people yeah. running behind um you know things just not going the way that you're supposed to like <laughs> in filmmaking yeah. you know if one thing goes wrong anything can go wrong um yeah. and then there's also the business side of it and like, strike right now for example yeah um, yeah you know so there are other things out there but like no there's still a lot of joy left in there um like where the magic isn't completely gone and, it's, and wrestling could be the same way though i mean i feel like wrestling yeah. and acting are so similar like that because like so similar when you're in it like there are definitely days it depends also what promotion you go to like you go know, yeah. into a locker room full of like people are just the energy's down and you can, you kind of feel that the same yeah. way could be on a set yeah no that that makes perfect sense i always i kind of learned the idea of a, a tether just because I really love Madeline Petch. I'm, I love Riverdale. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to say it. I love Riverdale. Me and Penelope Ford are Riverdale fiends. And uh, I love Madeline Petch. And I would watch her on YouTube and think like, wow, she because she has a YouTube channel. And I would be like, wow, she's so amazing. Like she's sitting here so passionately watching these movies and crying. I feel it like, because me just knowing how hard it can be to wrestle I was like that's so amazing and it kind of made me take a step back and like look into what can what can I do to still have that magic and not take away what I enjoy oh I absolutely love that I feel like there's a lot of positivity that you know anyone that's in the wrestling industry or acting industry or anyone in the arts can like you know take from this it's yeah. it's, it's the mindset man it, it's it's all about the mindset and I'm, I'm so glad that you shared that um Moving on because we are we are wrapping things up. We I could talk to you all day here, but I, I have to know. I, know. I have to know. Like I, I've done some homework on you. I understand you are a big Britney Spears fan. I am. I <laughs> love Britney Spears so much. I really do. All right. Well, with that being said, uh, I have to ask. First off, top three songs go. Um, that's so. My songs are weird. I love when I found you off of the Britney album, the self entitled album. Uh, I love Don't Let Me Be the Last to Know, and I really love Overprotected. Wow. Oh, those are low-key. 
Very low yeah. key right there. Like and and my other one that's this is like my underlying like this is my underlying one that's low key my favorite above all those, but you only know it when I'm lit because it's a lit song. I love I got that boom boom with the Ying Yang twins. <laughs> and I think it's so crazy. Mickey James has a song with the Ying Yang twins and Britney has a song with the Ying Yang twins. So they're kind of like related in music terms. I think that's a huge compliment for Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, no, that, that's amazing. That, that's when you know you're a real Britney fan right there. Like, where so, yeah. there, there are people that will claim to Britney Spears fans. I guarantee you, the couple out there are like, what songs are those? Yeah. You ain't, you yeah. ain't a real Britney fan then. <laughs> yeah. You don't. That's my saying. I always go, you don't. You know? Um, <laughs> now, I, I know wrestling, like, you know, Chris Jericho talks about this too with his character, with, yeah. uh, with, especially with this evolution, taking things outside of wrestling from, yeah. like, you know, from pop, pop culture, bring it into who they are. Was that the case yeah. for you for Britney Spears? Absolutely. Um, I, my, my favorite things on the planet are Britney Spears, Rock of Love, and Jennifer Coolidge. And Daisy of Love, but that <laughs> falls under Rock of Love. Um, so for me, uh, this especially hit when I got my uh, top surgery done, when I got my boobies, I was sitting at home and I kind of was sad that I couldn't wrestle for a long time. So I, I muted everything that had to do with wrestling on my social media to just clear my mind. I was living in the middle of the desert and just looking at like, the Pussycat Dolls and old Britney performances and watching Rock of Love and seeing all this, these awesome things. And I was sitting there like, wow, this is kind of like what I feel like I'm missing in my character, in my look, in this and that. And I really sat back and realized, for at least in my aspect of me personally, what I feel wrestling's missing for me. And, mm -hmm. uh, and having that like six months in the middle of the desert doing nothing to do with wrestling not i never thought about it which was crazy it's the first time in almost 10 years i haven't thought about wrestling um wow it gave me an entire new perspective on the industry coming back in after that it gave me new fresh ideas and i, I came up with this whole entire new look because i i i was watching all this stuff and i was like wow i haven't seen anything like that done in so long but like being able to i think take it and make it fresh which I think came with being away from everything because because my goal here was to just do it in a way like because my gear I love it I would wear it on the streets I don't think it looks like wrestling gear I think it looks like something that you wear at a club I think it looks like something you would wear on stage if you're a pop star so I was just trying to think like what makes Britney so relatable that people love her what makes Daisy De La Hoya so relatable that people love her so I was just really trying to do that and figure out how to incorporate that I love it I love it. And it works so well. And it seems like so organic with like who you are as a person. So like, you know, it, it's working. So keep on slaying. Um, again, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day. And like we, we are wrapping up here before I let you go, though. Like, tell the audience, shoot your shot. What do you have going on? What do you have coming up next? Whew, okay, well, I this weekend, I have a show at the Sanctuary in Hazleton, Pennsylvania on Friday. Saturday, I'm wrestling. Ace Austin is running a show uh, in Conrad Weiser High School in Pennsylvania, which is ironically a show 20 minutes away from the school I went to, because for people that don't know me and Ace Austin have been pals since I, we were both 14. Um, so he's doing that show and I'm performing at that show. I'm wrestling uh, Mean Gia Miller. And that's exciting because my whole hometown crowd is going to be there. Then that's awesome. that Sunday. Yeah, I'm really excited for that one. Then that Sunday, I'm going to be at uh, the Sanctuary again. And then I fly to Hawaii and I have Oos Wrestling on Thursday next week. So I'm lit about that one. I come, I leave Hawaii, go straight to Arizona. And I have a signing on Saturday the 11th at 3D Sports in Glendale. It's either in Glendale or in Phoenix. Then that day I have a show, uh, IZW in Glendale. Then I come home to Dayton. I'm based out of Dayton now. And the next day I have a show. I can't remember. I think it, I don't, don't quote me. I think it's XVW in Dayton uh, on the 14th. And then I go to Boston and then I'll have WrestleCade weekend. Boom, WrestleCade. That's the big one right there. That's Russell the big Cade, one. WrestleCade, anybody who knows me knows WrestleCade Jamie is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> and how so? Like, I, now I have to ask, how so? I have drank Winston-Salem dry so many times in my life. 
every Wrestlecade, and I lead the party. Everybody knows once Wrestlecade comes around to come find me, and we will be skating in the parking lots, eating all the pizza, drinking all the alcohol. Yeah. Well, sounds like a must go yeah. event. Uh, yeah. Wrestlecade, obviously, a big deal. Wrestlecade with Jamie, bigger deal.